The Android 11 beta is out and we are excited to try it with our Google Pixel here. There are a lot of improvements, a lot of things to try out, but we're just going to focus on the ones that I think are useful for everyday use of your smartphone. So in this video, we're going to show you how it works and how you can enable them in your own Google Pixel if you have one. So first off is the home screen app suggestion feature, which is located just above your Google search bar on your home screen, of course. And these are apps that are most frequently used by you. And they will be replaced by the most latest apps that you launch. So for example, I go to my app tray and let's say if I boot up, say Facebook, and this will replace whatever app that was down there. The most latest will be on the first. Really cool feature. So let's say you don't want an app from this bar to go away. You can also choose to pin it. Let's say if I choose to pin YouTube, this won't be removed. So if I try it again with a new app, let's say Google Play Movies, this should then replace one of the apps on that suggestion bar, except for YouTube. So there you go. You can also uh, disable this feature or enable it by long pressing your home screen, go to home settings, and there you go. App suggestions, suggestions on home screen, you can turn it off, turn it back on. You can also block apps that you don't want to appear on your suggestions. So from here you can choose, right? So really cool feature for quick access to your most favorite apps. Next up is the notifications categorization in your notifications tray. So it just used to be a long list of notifications. In Android 11, it categorizes them in conversations for chat apps, alerting notifications for everything else, or silent notifications for apps that you set to silent. So to do that, you basically just hit a long press a notification and select from alerting, uh, priority or silent, and that's how you can categorize them if you want. All chat apps will appear in the conversations tab. So this makes it really easy to have a quick look at your notifications at a glance uh, without it being too cluttered. A really cool feature added to Android 11 that I think will be useful for everyone, especially popular people who get lots of notifications every day. So the next feature is notifications history, which is now officially part of the OS. Basically, it just lets you view all your past notifications that you may have accidentally swept away. Simply go to your settings, apps and notifications, notifications, and there is the notifications history tab. Tap on it, tap on it, and you will see a list of notifications that you may have accidentally swept away previously. Useful for busy people who are constantly on their phones and swiping left and right. You may not know what you've swept away. Maybe it could be an important message from your mom. A new feature is when you swipe up to your task manager and you get three new options that you can use to either screenshot your apps, the apps that you're hovering over. And this takes a screenshot of the app itself and not the screen around it. Uh, this is a bit different from your regular screenshot mechanic and useful for, you know, multitasking, quick screenshots of apps in case you want to show something to your friend. The next one is called select right in the middle. When you hit select, it gives you a highlighted list of text that you can select, copy, paste, or even share. Really useful for, again, multitasking. And then the last option is share, which works pretty much like screenshot. It automatically takes a screenshot and gives you a list of contacts that you can share it to. Again, multitasking, sharing it with people uh, really quickly without having actually to go into the apps itself. It can all be done in your task manager. The next feature includes moving the media controls around, specifically, it will be placed next to or above your quick settings uh, box here. But to enable that, you need to open a media app. For me, I'm going to use Spotify. Play a song, make sure something's playing. Now that it's running in the background, you should see Spotify next to your quick settings. Swipe down again, you can scrub, pause, skip, and uh, pretty much see what song is playing. On top of that, you can also choose which Bluetooth device you want your song to be playing on. Pair, and you can do everything from here without actually having to go into Spotify itself. Now, it's a little buggy in that you can't scrub while the song is playing. It works sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. You need to hit pause, then scrub, then it'll work. Otherwise, it just doesn't really work properly. But it should be fixed once the final version of Android 11 is launched. Now, to get this on your beta version of Android 11, if you have a Pixel, is to go onto Settings, go to Developer Settings in System, and scroll all the way down to Media. 
which is pretty far down. Pretty, pretty far down. I'm gone past it. There you go, media. Media is here. Go to media resumption, turn that on, and you should have the feature enabled. Next feature that's new to Android 11 is the integrated screen recording app, which can be found in your quick settings menu here. Simply hit screen record, and from here you can record audio as well and show touch on screen, which provides gives you the dot, shows you a dot on where you're tapping on the screen. And now it's recording my display. Now for most of this video, if you're watching on the split screen, you've been seeing uh, a screen record of this phone which has been recorded using this feature itself so it works absolutely fine without any problems but if you are an android user who have been using oems like xiaomi vivo and oppo this isn't something new it's been available since forever but it's pretty cool now that google has decided to add it onto android 11 and it makes it really convenient for people who want to share content on their displays with their friends without actually having to download a third-party screen recording app and it's more trustworthy because this is developed and uh, rolled out by Google itself. It's officially part of Android 11. Yeah. So these are all the new Android 11 features that I think are most useful for everyone. Now, do remember that this is a beta build and some of these features may be removed, I don't know, or they may be improved upon and let's hope for the latter. So we'll wait for the full final version of the Android 11 to come out this September before we pass judgment. For now, Android 10 is still great and intuitive. And if you need a smartphone with Android 10, our sponsor for today, Vivo, has a fantastic phone in the Vivo V19. On top of a great OS are features like a gorgeous 6.44 inch Super AMOLED Ultra O screen with dual selfie cameras, which can snap night selfies with its 32 megapixel lens, or grab more in just one shot with super wide angle selfie mode. It's also got an impressive 48 megapixel quad AI camera, which has impressive night mode too. Plus, the phone supports up to 33 watts of Vivo Flash Charge 2.0 to juice up your phone in no time. Click the link in the description box below to get yourself a Vivo V19 at an affordable 1,699 ringgit. So what do you think about Android 11's latest features? Let us know what you think, which one you like, which one you don't down in the comment section below. Remember to like, subscribe, and this is Victor signing off. Bye-bye.